meant for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Chester and Brad are both here from Lincoln Park tonight. <clears throat> Hello. Good to see you guys. It's good to be back. Thanks for having us again. Oh, it is our pleasure. I was uh, looking at these numbers. It was uh, Ann gave me my uh, beat sheets. Got all the uh, big beats from the band on it. Meaning, uh, yeah, that says stuff like uh, when they were on Love Line last and that kind of stuff. <laughs> One thing said uh, <laughs> big beat. It said uh, sold uh, uh, the uh, hybrid th theory uh, sold uh, 7.8 million. In the United States, wow. and uh, then I was thinking, actually, I, I thought, uh, yeah, it's actually billion. That's a billion. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> True, that's a thousand. It's more than million. McDonald's. Well, the, the the reason why is because we actually put a CD in with every cheeseburger. That's oh sold. my God, that explains it. <laughs> the Over seven point eight billion. The band is modest, and they uh, like to downplay the success. But uh, I was looking at that and thinking, holy ass! And then uh, Ann walked in here two minutes later and went, "Can you believe those numbers?" <laughs> yeah. Best-selling uh, band of 2001? Absolutely amazing. I'm, Thanks. Uh, I, not that you shouldn't be. I mean, someone's got it. I, isn't it always like Mariah Carey or something? Isn't it somebody you don't want to Well, we certainly didn't it? think it was going to be us. You know, I mean, that was the last thing we thought. We thought we were going to sell, you know, six copies. You know what's funny is in, oftentimes we go to places and you've talked to people and they have no idea. They've never heard of Lincoln Park. What? They have no idea who we are. Really? Yeah. Who says that? No, like we'll, go to, we'll be no, like we'll be on tour and we'll go to a truck stop and they'll say, "Oh, are you guys in a band?" We'll say, "Yeah." They'll say, "What's the name of your band?" Lincoln Park. Never heard of you. I, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if that's sort of exclusive to this country. The you know so what I mean? Spotty like that. Yeah, I mean, there's places. You know, we have the same thing. There's yeah. places you or I can go, and people will be screaming out "Love Line" or "Man Show" or something, and then you can go to my family house, for instance. And it, <laughs> oh, what's funny is you still swinging a hammer, son? What's going on with you? I was in uh, Phoenix. Uh, Where'd you get that nice car? <laughs> I was in Phoenix not too long ago, and I went out with my friend to dinner, and he owns a tattoo shop, and we're sitting in the restaurant, and all these people keep coming up to the table, and they're like. Dude, you're the guy who owns Club Tattoo, uh, and he's uh, like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, that's me." And one after another, finally, one of the girls that worked at the restaurant comes up and she's like, "Oh my God, you're the guy from Club Tattoo, this and that," and he's like, "Yeah, you know, I am." And she talked about how she wrote a paper on him and all this kind of stuff. And oh I'm sitting God. there, and he's looking at me, and they just started laughing because right. I guess they were expecting everybody to walk up to me and be like, "Oh, you're the guy from Lincoln Park," but yeah, nobody, nobody knows who we are. I think. So. <laughs> But Adam and I pick, picked Lincoln Park out of the crowd long ago. You remember yes. that? Yes. Yes. We had uh, at the drive-in. But you cursed them, I believe. I, Lincoln Park? Yes. So, that would be, <laughs> That's so right. you would be successful. Yes. I Thank put, you. Who, right. What other band did I put a curse on it's about like a, six, like seven years Hura. ago? Uh, <laughs> no doubt, I believe. No doubt. No doubt. And look, look what happened yeah. to them. Yeah, that worked. No, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I... I put a pox on No Doubt's career about seven, seven years, years ago, ago, and it's been uh, nothing but uh, through the... Through and that's, the that's why you curse yourself nightly. I try that, but it, it, I realize you know, I can't do it to myself, <laughs> but I did do it to Lincoln Park uh, Thank some you. years back. Yeah. yeah. It's like two years ago, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll, re -up, I'll, uh, I'll give you guys like a warm, over, warm up on the curse or something later on tonight, because when Adam Carolla puts the curse on you, it's uh, <laughs> straight, you, you, you're cursed all the way to the bank. All right. But uh, who was here? Dri at the drive-in was in here at about the same time. Same we week. Met, same same week, week we met, we met Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln Park, and we thought to ourselves, we hate those a-holes <laughs> at, at, uh, at the drive-in. They were just pricks. <laughs> and then uh, we said, we like those Lincoln Park guys. And then we went and saw you both in concert at the uh, Acoustic Christmas, and we thought, isn't it great that uh, Lincoln Park is so good and at the drive-in sucks. So <laughs> they're probably going to come on yeah. and Anderson's going to play this. But true, we did think that, didn't we? Oh, yes, we did. That's what we thought. All oh, right. man. Yeah, so here we are. That is so, that's so good. Thank, Thank you. you. That was a great story. <laughs> yeah, Drew was really, uh, really thinking about it, too. He really was talking about it. About that, because I remember so vividly. I, I know, Drew. Because we, 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 we meet new bands, and you guys stuck with us, not just as musicians, but as people. We thought, we, those guys, are, I wonder, no, no, no. We, we went to see, <laughs> we thought, I wonder if they're as good a music, you know, if the band is, as, we hope they're as good as they were guys. You know, that right. those guys deserve to do well, you know. Man, know those guys are great so. guys. That we really wish they could play their instruments. Yeah, that's the acting classes have paid off. We, so we hope that it works That's out. what we thought, and it turned out to be. <laughs> 
<laughs> Good. Patrick is 26. Patrick? Yes. What's up? Uh, well, Drew, Adam, love the show. I was just looking for validation for a theory that I have. Um, mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of like I know sperm only reproduces, you know, a certain amount of time. Every time we come, it's like a million sperm gush out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm figuring if you can make yourself come six to ten times a day maybe, Mm -hmm. then basically you should be sterile, is my so theory. Can, can you run the spigot dry? Right. Turns out you can't do that. I've tried. Adam, yeah, Adam has made a personal I run I turned my it. nuts inside out before I actually <laughs> they ran do, the spigot they, dry. Yeah, that's right. They, they flop right on out your your, your right. right. But so the, this the, is not a good form of birth control. Absolutely inadequate. Why? Totally inadequate. Why can't you do this? You trip? can lower your sperm count, and the, but because because sperm is processed, it, it's it's packaged. It's in a packaging plant. It's not like it comes strictly out of your nuts the, the second it can swim. It's being constantly processed and turned over. And at the point at which you can't produce any semen, I mean, you, you nothing will squeeze out. Maybe then, because you're not having an orgasm. Hey, hey, Patrick, let me uh, let me just put a hole in your theory here, which is. After you beat yourself silly for 14 <laughs> hours, and you've gotten off like 28 times in the last uh, half day, you're really going to be up for a good balling? Yeah, you can't. Is, that, is, that, is, that, is that what you want to that, do? That's the point. You can't even get an erection anymore. Either. I mean, not only that, right. but but isn't the first one the best one anyways? Usually. Espe well, I mean. Unless you wait too especially long, with your then it's the Especially second. with your partner. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you have some kind of thing worked out to where it gets better and better, you know, after the fifth fifth or sixth time well and there's, a, there's a thing where the more sexual activity you have the more your body will try to keep up with it too so your body will pick up the pace a little to kind of keep up with what uh, oh, that's you're putting out that's all right patrick that's a retarded idea but i had a great <laughs> idea on the ride in oh yeah and i'm really i'm gonna, I'm gonna get into this i gotta do this uh -huh. we, i was driving in i was driving my usual i like to drive about 14 miles an hour over whatever the posted speed limit it is is and i I look, I'm looking in the rear, and I'm seeing what looks like a cop bike, maybe a hundred yards or so behind me. It's got the one headlight, and then it's got the two sort of markers down below to the right and left. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's a cop bike. That's a cop bike. I drive everywhere I go at night. It's I just stare in the rear view. I don't even look at the road, and I try to make out the headlights. That's a minivan. That could be a cruiser. I think it's going to be a cop car. And I just realized all I need is a sticker. I need a little sticker just a little bigger than a postage stamp to stick onto my rearview mirror that is cop headlights. Because all cars have their sort of headlight signature. You something to something to mark it against, to compare it against? No, just a sticker to remind me like I can reference. Yeah, I can reference yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean you can look up and go, nah, that's a Ford L T D with yeah. a you know, cops drive one car. Maybe you gotta put two or three, maybe put the bike along the bottom. But you got the reference. Yeah. There's that's nothing a, worse than that's driving. That's a great idea. It's, it's pretty easy, right? Sure, cops would love it while they're beating the crap out of you <laughs> in their unmarked car. <laughs> but uh, it couldn't hurt, could it? I mean, it wouldn't be bad. You just do a little clear sticker under there. <laughs> you've, you've totally stumped me. So these guys, these, here's the bubble, the thought bubble of these guys' heads. Like, holy Christ, he's driving without looking forward. I know, and actually, he wants more things to look why behind. Why don't you just that? get radar? What's yeah, funny is that I rely work. on my my kind of like animal instincts when I drive, and I I, I realize are. sometimes that I haven't looked at the road in like the last ten minutes. Yeah, cause you're looking because for I was cops. like, you know, you know, yeah, looking for cops or like looking for a CD or like talking to someone. No, that's like, looking safe. At, looking, that's at the, looking at the mirrors, looking at you know that's the, the speedometer, and then I go, wait, I haven't stared at the road once since I left my house. Yeah, that's that's good. That's Is just, that cool? No, that's intuition. <laughs> you got like a spidey sense when you drive. I've never uh, been in an accident though. Mm -hmm. That's God. good. You'll not you'll never be in one with that kind of. <laughs> I put a curse on you. Remember? <laughs> it's a rock. I'm untouchable to the moon. now. True. What do you think of my cop light stickers? I like it. It's good. That's yeah, solid. solid, yeah. That couldn't hurt. Jennifer? Yeah. You're 20? Yeah. What's the matter, baby doll? <laughs> um, me and my boyfriend, we're, you know, we've been going out for two years, and he's like a really touchy person, and I'm not. Like, when we wake up in the morning, he'll just smack my butt and just pick up, pick up my boobs. And I have to like shoo him away because I'm not in a touchy mood. Guys are funny and that way. They can be like little like little organ grinder monkeys or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they come at you with the hands all the time. It's yeah. like it's like some instinctive thing they can't get enough of. Well, for the, how old is he? Um, he's just a year older than I. Twenty one. That would he's, be. He's twenty. He's twenty one, and I'll be turning twenty one next month. So. Yeah, because there's there's this part 
in a guy's life that usually ends in the mid 20s, maybe early 20s, depending on when you got started, which is, I can feel a boob for free, like when I want. It's right here. It's a weird thing. You, you know what I yeah, mean? They I, can't. They can't stop. It's like it's again. Like, yeah, it's like the organ, 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 monkey yeah, in, your, in like, your ears. It's like uh, he's just uh, thankful monkey. that you allow him to touch you when you're naked. Right. He wants to get as much as he can in. There's nothing wrong with that. No, he can't. Just, he can't, just smack him away. Let, let me flip it around a little bit, Jennifer. He can't stop. <laughs> it's it's not because of you. It's not because it's just that's in his biology. He can't stop. Well, so what's the problem with that, Jennifer? It's just I'm not like there's sometimes I just don't want to be touched. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he'll just come out and smack me, and I'm like, dude, leave me alone. I just like seriously, I just yell and scream at him, and also I'm like, uh, oh, never mind, just you know. Yeah. You got any problems? No, we don't really. It's just, Nobody hit you growing up. Uh-huh. People like people like they're like you usually have some yeah, uh, body some space issues. issues, but boundary issues that anybody who violates your body boundaries is a very threatening or uncomfortable. And if somebody smacked you around when you were a kid, that's a good way to sort of get into that. Anything like that? Hum. Oh. Hey Jennifer. Yeah. Let's backtrack. You called the show. Yeah. Right. You want, you want to talk to us about your problem? Yeah. Okay. What are you doing right now? Knitting. Well, uh, I'm going to get my son a bottle. Okay, hold on a second. There's always trouble when uh, people start things with uh, H's that don't have H's, and they go, huh? Or they go, they go, huh, 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 uh, huh. When you, when you start everything with the huh, uh, it, it's it's bad. Like there's no, no Harvard professor who goes start things with huh. Mm. huh? She, I don't think she was. I don't think she was expecting to go into the truth, which was the fact that she's been. Probably Violator. abused some way, yeah. and sounds she's not, like she's it. really not interested in the truth. Is the problem, yeah. Gen- Jennifer? Yeah. Okay, now were you ever abused in any Any-anybody, way? Anybody? No, she won't. Shush. <laughs> no. No. Adam, really. were you ever abused in any way? Hell. <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, I had a couple encounters with a couple, couple boyfriends. Now, how about your dad? Where's your dad? Uh, who knows? <laughs> he never oh, hit okay. you. He never hit you growing up. Um, he was around for a while. He never hit you growing up. No, just the whooping, like. Okay, well, the whooping is physical abuse, and that's what creates these body boundary issues. Whooping is not okay. It's not not something that should ever be done to a child. I mean, he didn't whoop me like all the time. He just whooped me when I was like really, really bad. One time is enough to do it to you, Jennifer. Well, all right. So anyway, you have a kid with uh, with this guy. Um. Oh. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't. I All right, can't. Drew, sh- quiet down. You have a, Whose kid is this? Uh, it's his. It's his. And, and yours came too, out, right? Came out of you? Yeah, it came out of me. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, you guys going to get married or anything? Yeah, um, I've got to finish some school and up, and after we finish school, we're going to, you know, plan the wedding. Why bother with the school? I mean, well, I, I, I work at a hospital, and the hospital has, like, Enrichment, you know, where you can move up. Oh, okay. All right, then that's a good idea. Uh, you uh, you work on that. No more kids, right? Um, maybe later, and like later, later. When this okay. one's old enough to help you raise the next one, that's <laughs> when you get another child. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, or or make it in the circus, whichever comes first. <laughs> okay. Pretty penny to be made over there. Okay. All right, oh, all right. Boy. Now, as far as as far as this guy goes, feel free to tell him things uh, that make you feel uncomfortable but on the other hand realize if he's just doing it out of love and affection and you have some issues left over from the past don't take those out on him that's right all right well said all right good times right baby doll yep yeah yeah (laughs) yep Uh Uh uh-huh man Uh let's all just be Let's all think about our lives. So that's what we sound like when we wake up in the middle of the night and get a bottle for our babies. Yep. <laughs> no. No. Huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Van? Yeah, what's up? You're 21. Yep. What's up? Well, when I go to clubs, right, and I start dancing with girls, mm-hmm. I get a Mondo hard on. Mondo. Mondo yeah. hard on. All right. Wow. It could happen. And I was wondering if there was any way I could reduce that. Reduce it? Hmm. I know. I mean, 
Yeah. Oh, how how do you reduce it? Much embarrassing. I mean, you need to calm down, bro. How does he reduce it, Adam? You do that belt. You do that belt pull move where you pull it up and tuck it against your belly up the, in your the, waistband. The, the snap up oh. maneuver. Snap up. Just make sure your shirt's tucked in, or you know, it's, it's long enough to hang over your. Yeah, pants. my hernia is hurting. I do that, but <laughs> man, I tell you, it like finds its way around that. Oh, no, it does. Listen, do. this is the, it, Van, seriously. This is the it's wither the. Um, Quite down, writhing Drew. penis syndrome, yes, indeed, yes. Drew, that's enough. Yeah. You're out of control. <laughs> <I'm thinking laughs> listen to me. I'm listening. Van, not yeah. you, Drew. Uh, I don't want you talking uh, anymore or it. listening uh. or breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Stop your heart. Stop your mind from racing. Well, here's, that? here's what I want, Van. I, yeah. Next time you get that boner, I want you to take your hand. I want you to slide it down your pants. I want, I want you to take your penis and pull it up against your belly and tuck it in in your waistband. You can, I do it like in my belly button, dude. Yeah. 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 I've done that, but it like. It does what? It's not comfortable, so it's like screw that. I'm not staying in the. No, position. it's not comfortable, but it'll go away very quickly. It can it can't stay erect in that position. Maybe Adam, maybe there's an opportunity here for you to invent Idiot. something new, like a penis garter. Maybe I'm, you should try finding yeah. one girl that you like, and then getting to know her. And then maybe, you know, being be intimate with her for a while. Yeah. So you get over the excitement of just being around, you know, uh, the opposite sex. A I mean, a, you a know? penis is like a shark. It has to keep Moving. swimming forward. Or Otherwise, it dies. It dies. Mm -hmm. And when you put the penis up against the belly, it's like the shark getting caught in the wreath. It, it, it does yeah. not, it, it has nowhere to go. But isn't this time to invent like a penis garter? And don't watch so much porn. So up against it. the belly? Maybe to <laughs> tie it to your leg, you know, tie Drew, it down. you like can't it. push it down. It tries to push yeah, up. Yeah, but then we can't get an erection that way. No, really you can. can. Look, when you lie on your belly at night, and you're sleeping, and your penis is down by your leg, that's where you get that boner. Penis uh -huh. tries to push you up like a bottle jack. <laughs> you, right? Right, bottle jack. Bottle jack. You take that boner, put it against your belly, and lay on it. It's got nowhere to go because it can't push you up into your abdomen. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. True. I, I, I got to get the dry race yeah, board yeah. out? Or, yeah, yeah. Are we, okay. All right, let's hear a Lincoln Park song. He used to be up on the screen, actually, last yeah. time I looked, and then it left. <laughs> Maybe we're playing a new song. Taint, it's called. We're playing a new Faint, song? Taint, it's called. All right. Yeah, Taint is something else. Yeah. You uh, ready there, uh, Anderson? <laughs> Here's a little something from Lincoln Park. Yeah. Lincoln Park, everybody. CD's called Meteora. It is uh, out as we speak. We'll uh, uh, see one more call or take a break. Let's take one right, more call. Okay. Question for the band. Yeah. Glenn? Yeah, yeah. You're 18? Yeah. You got a question for Chester and Brad? Yeah, first, I just, Meteora was like the coolest CD. You guys kicked so much ass. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. How was it doing a song for The Matrix? Well, um, the interesting thing about that is, you know, we're big fans of the film, and uh, we really got kind of interested early on in just kind of poking our nose around and saying that we wanted to do something with them no matter what it was. Um, and uh, so they s suggested that maybe we suggest a, a, a track and we submitted an instrumental track called Session and that's a, a track off the new record. And um, we're really proud of it because it not too many instrumental tracks make it to a soundtrack of this kind of level where there's a lot of exposure, a lot of great bands with a lot of new stuff and new songs. And... Um, so to have an instrumental open up the, the album is really kind of, uh, it's really great for us because it's something that we're really proud of. The, the, the real reason we, we actually wanted to do something for the soundtrack was so that we could get to go to the premiere and see the movie before everyone else. How was Why'd it, by the way? Why'd you say that, man? That's the truth. You're not supposed to say the truth. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought we, I thought we decided to be honest this time. Oh, I forgot. This time. <laughs> but it's that kind of... Uh, it's that kind of honesty that uh, when a guy who's uh, selling siding says, "Can I be honest with you for a second? <laughs> I have the siding on my place, mm -hmm. and I gotta be. Can I be honest? I realize the guys who say, "Can I be honest?" are the biggest liars. Right. Really, there are, and it sort of suggests that they were lying the rest of the time. Right. Now they're going in honest. You're like, <laughs> we've been talking for 45 minutes. Now you want to be honest? Like, what was the other crap we we're talking about? <laughs> so, but you guys, um, when they do a movie like The Matrix, they they score it, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 then they also have a soundtrack. Is that correct? Can I, can I be honest? Be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, the the music's always been really important for the Matrix. Like last time, last time they had Deftones, a lot of heavier right. music too. So, 
Um, this time they have like POD, Rage Against the Machine. So there's the score. It's actually, I think, two CDs. One's primarily score and the other's primarily uh, original songs that were right. made for the movie. And, and then a lot of the times the songs on the soundtrack aren't actually in the body of the movie. It, it seems like yeah. that quite a bit, right? Um, sometimes it's really... Be honest. <laughs> sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. Um, simply because, you know, if the movie is scored, the right. music that is scored typically uh, kind of gives the feeling for the scene. Right. And the, the, the soundtrack music is usually, wait, you know, used for the end credits and all that right. kind of right. Star song's actually in the end credits. Right. So, you know. Right. Hey, I don't know. I mean, you're being honest. That's, that's the important Seriously. part. I'm Seriously. I'm glad we've, we've established this, <laughs> this type of report. Right. The curse will continue. <laughs> we'll uh, take ourselves a little break. Lincoln Park in studio tonight. We'll be right back after this. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Chester and Brad are both here tonight from Lincoln Park. Meteora is the name of the CD. It is currently out, and uh, we will hear another cut off it in the 11 o'clock hour. Let's go to uh, Sean. Sean? Yes. You're 20. What's up? Hey, uh, well, um, basically, uh, I just called. I just wanted to um, say that I'm a huge fan of Lincoln Park. Uh, love you guys' music, and uh, just I'm a huge fan, so I just wanted to say what's up. Word. Dude. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> all right. That's, that's it. A great. That was the best caller we've had all night. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Right Good on. question. In all honesty. <laughs> all right, Sean. <laughs> right on. Thanks. Thanks, dude. All right. Sean just uh, made a question up because he wanted to say hi to the band. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, uh, that sounded like my friend. Really? Yeah, I didn't no. want to say something, though. Nina? You're 17? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I wanted to know how long it takes for um, chlamydia to get out of your system. You can I sweat it out in a couple hours it's if a you run on really a treadmill, a, a right? Couple, a couple days. It really is a very quick, rapid response. What is it? It may, it may be hours, in fact. Chlamydia? I would, I would give it a couple of days. I mean, days. after you take the stuff? The yeah, yeah, I went and got treatment Monday. You took the big... Did you have a shot also or just the oral pills? But no, it wasn't even that. It's like I had to drink it. Yeah, the, the azithromycin. Is yeah. chlamydia the clap? No, nah, clap was really gonorrhea. But, I mean, no. everyone's getting much more sophisticated about these things now. Chlamydia. Why, uh, why do they call it clap? I don't know. I think I might. <laughs> because <laughs> that's the sound it makes in your pants when you run. <laughs> really? It makes a clapping yeah. sound? Uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, the chlamydia is the leading cause of infertility in this country. People can walk around with it for a long time and not know they had it. It's commonly... I know in, where I got it from. It's commonly in the tubes. You can get discharge, irritation, painful urination, that kind of stuff. Where'd you get it from, Nina? My boyfriend. How'd uh, he get it? We've been together four months, so uh, I'm not sure how long I had it. Where'd he get it? Um, he's not sure. He had a bad pass. A bad pass. And he's never, he had never been tested before, but I have. And he's been treated now, too? Yeah, we both got treatment together. Good times. All yeah. right. You using, then, using birth control now? Uh, yeah, I'm on depo shot. Nice. Depo. Are you still are you wearing a condom in the meantime anyway, or no? Uh, no. Did you guys yeah, get... I also wanted to ask, how long should we wait to have sex? Eight years. No. You, you, had, you oh. could just wait till the weekend. Are you, are, are you, um... Yeah, God doesn't like it when you get it on during the week. Look out, we can... Are you, um, been tested for HIV and hepatitis and all yes, that? Yes, all that. I already had got all my hepatitis shots in. Fantastic. I did it all at once. Well, well, there's, there's still hepatitis C, though, so... Yeah. yeah. Neat. I got tested Wear for protection. all that. Right. You take care of business. <laughs> yes, of course. I have to be responsible. Wow, that's nice. I like that. How old Yet you got chlamydia. Huh? Well, <laughs> she took care of it as soon as she got it. That's true. It. You get kudos. Yeah. Kudos. What the, how old's your boyfriend? He's 21. Mm. 21. Mm. Is he all right? What, what's he do for a living? He works, he's a fireman for a brick company. For a brick company? Yeah, he um, he watches the kilns. He takes readings and mm. stuff like that, that. Would that really be called a fireman? Yeah, they call him a fireman. Okay. Fire uh, safety he's, guy. He has to also supervise. He only He's only one there at night. You have to supervise the yard. Got it. And Got it. All right. That's all good. That Fair well. enough. All right. Game on. Brick making's interesting. Pull that right out of the earth there. They form it up. Do they really? Then they, they fire it. Yeah. They're like thousands of degrees. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Saw a whole documentary on it. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what happened to bricks? I mean, everything was made out of brick, right, at one time? <clears throat> yeah. And then it just... Well, brick... 
brick, uh, what, what ended up happening is uh, reinforced concrete took the place of brick. Uh, cheaper building supplies yeah. and materials. Concrete Profits blocks, go up. You know, cost blocks. of making the building goes down, and there's no art put into it. Yeah. It's really a bummer because we go to Europe and outside the world, you know, outside the country where there's actually, you know, some history. And, um, and, uh. Where'd you grow up? <laughs> Where'd you grow up, seriously? I grew up in Phoenix. Phoenix, there you go. And, I, it's yeah. oldest, the oldest, building, <laughs> oldest buildings in Phoenix were built in the yeah. 80s. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. I was like, wow, look at all this masonry work. You know, this yeah. stuff, you don't find this stuff anywhere except for New York and, you know, maybe Boston. some parts in, like, the East Coast. Yeah. Right. Boston. You know, throughout the country, there's some things, but there really isn't anything of really great art artistry, you know? Well, it, do, it doesn't work out well in uh, earthquake areas like uh, California, especially. Brick just crumbles like the first thing that comes down. It's no excuse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Safety should not be a factor when it comes to buildings. It's Absolutely. all about artistry. Yeah. Absolutely. Art. All about ego, yeah. artistry, and, you know, narcissistic behavior. Yeah, and, and you know, they do... Uh, I don't want to dedicate the night show to bricks, but uh, <laughs> I agree. I miss bricks uh, myself. And uh, I miss uh, sayings that involve bricks, like... Uh, Sunk like a brick, uh, hit the brick. Thick as a brick. Thick as a brick. It's all, oh, I don't think kids today know any brick sayings either. There's bricks of drugs and. Uh, brick X house. <laughs> yeah, there's a brick S house. Yeah, what happened to bricks? They went the way of the dodo. <laughs> Drew, you know what I was thinking of the oh, other no, night? Oh, no, do tell. The saying, gone the way of the dodo, yeah. has gone the way of the dodo. That's true. Very ironic. <laughs> All right. So much so that no one will know what the F you're talking about. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Anna? Hello. Anna. Hi. I have a problem, but I just wanted to say how great I think Lincoln Park is. All right. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh. Um, I've been dating this guy for, like, for about a month. And, um, like, on our second date, he decided to tell me that he'd recently been divorced, and he was married for, like, three years. How old is he now? He's 24. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm the same age as him. Got it. And, well, last week we went out to dinner, because he told me he doesn't really talk talk to his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Because when I asked him why they got divorced, he got really defensive about it. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. And he's like, well, she started cheating on me and lying to me, and she'd have people threaten him. So he said that he filed for divorce. But we went out last week, and she kept calling him because he kept taking the phone call during dinner and walking out. And when I asked him who he keeps talking to, he said, oh, that's just my ex-wife. Don't worry about it. And then, like, the third time she called, he came back into the restaurant. He's like, well, we got to go. I got to go right now. And I was like, well, why? And he's like, well, I just have to go. She needs to talk to me right now, and it's really important. Do they have kids together? No. All right. She is a total chaos mess. And yeah. she's got him wrapped into her web of of turbulence. Yeah, and he, and I he don't has know. not extricated himself from it yet. He doesn't know how to. He's too enmeshed with her. Where, and, and it's interesting that Anna sort of it sort of phrased her original sort of description of him as he's weak. You know, he's sort of she she has people threatening him, and he's down and out because, it's, because she doesn't want him. And so, but I'll have him. And did you get that sort of? No, I didn't. Got a little bit out in there. But I was thinking of bricks. Okay. <laughs> I mean, to be honest. <laughs> Was you, did she have a question about bricks? <laughs> yeah, the, the the boyfriend seems to be thick as a brick. A Not only that, I think he also seems to be carrying a load of bricks around with him. Yes, the, the weight of the bricks of the world on his shoulders. But, Anna, listen, he, he, he you, you may need to set a little... Uh, Make some ulti not an ultimatum, but set some boundaries. With well, this guy. Let, let's try to figure out what's going on well, here. Well, I don't know why he, um, like, I don't know how to ask him if he's still in love with her or whatever. No, I doubt. I, he's thing probably thing sick as hell of her, in fact, but he doesn't know how to get himself out of it. Yeah, because I don't want to get into a relationship if he's just using me to occupy his time. And no, Anna, listen, li what... listen to me. He he probably really wants out, but doesn't know how to get out. Well, hold on, Drew. We don't know this for sure. We don't. Why? Okay. They they said he said that he divorced her about four months ago. Mm-hmm. And how long had they been broken up before they got the the divorce? I don't know. He doesn't really like. He doesn't specify. He just kind of. No, listen. It up. Why? Listen. I'm sure. I listen. I know what this. This no. this is somebody. All right. But listen, listen. This is a woman calling, going. I'm gonna. You ruined my life. I'm gonna kill myself. And he feels responsible All for right. her feelings. If it, if it, they were still kind of carrying on, he'd go. Hey, call me out with somebody. Call me about two hours. We'll get together later in the evening, and that'd be the end of it. But he can't. He can't get out of this cycle of being responsible for her chaos and feelings. And things. unless they're carrying on, and she found out that he was out on a date with Anna and freaked. Well, he never mentioned. No. It. Like when he when she called. 
Mm -hmm. He never says that he's on a date or, you know, don't call or anything like that. And I I don't know if I should say anything or not. All right. Well, here's the thing. (laughs) I think it's perfectly within your right to say to him, hey, when we're going out to dinner and your phone rings off the hook and it's your uh, ex... And then you got to go rush to see her. That doesn't sit very well. That's not a relationship with that's me. Not, that's not going to work. Now I'll, I'll I'll let this one slide, but this is the last one. And if it comes up again, then you got some serious talking to do. Yeah, so you, you, she, he has to set some limits with her. If he's if he's still in a relationship with her, fine, go have that relationship. But if it's that he feels responsible for all the depression and whatever is going on in her life right now because of this breakup. Right. He's got to break loose of that somehow. Give him a give him a pass on this one, but it can't happen again. All right. Okay. All right, baby doll. Good okay, luck. Thanks. Hey, good times. Bye. All right. True. You yeah. know, I think it's the responsibility of uh, the U.S. government to uh, do some pretty extensive brickwork. Yeah. You know, all great empires yeah. have done something where, you know, they build these A monument huge brick. monumental buildings, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, like we were in Milan, you know, the train station is like got Mussolini written all over it, you know. And it, it was great. We need, we need to do that. You know, we're going in and occupying countries you need to like build a huge monumental building I, uh, so that people can see that thousands of years from now i had proposed <laughs> some uh, years first. some years back that yeah. we build a 70 story barbecue in kansas city <laughs> yes solely that's, out of unreinforced brick yes that's beautiful uh and it was fine but we could not engineer the grill the grill was actually going to be uh, Nothing, well, because three football fields long. Well, and the problem was between grill. each, ra- you know, little the slat meat of would the, fall, fall through. through. It's, it's five yards between each slot of the grill. We have to genetically engineer <laughs> chicken so the breast could be at least the size of manhole We're really covers. Close. We're really We're close. We're close, <laughs> and I can't talk about it, but we have some really interesting breakthroughs coming through, and we're just a few few million dollars off. <laughs> All right, Emma. Yeah. You're fifteen. But you think you put it next to the world's biggest thermometer? Be great. Yeah. Although. That'd be so cool. I got a problem with that world's biggest <laughs> thermometer. I mean, the one in Baker the on the way to Vegas. Not a thermometer. It's just—it's just, it's it's just a, a sign. It's a big thing with lights on it, but it's not. There's no mercury in it. You know what I'm saying? It's a sign. Emma. Yes. What's up? Hello. Hi. What's going on? Um, I actually have two questions. One that's so important, though. Yeah. Shh. It's okay if I ask both of them. Ask the f- important one first. Okay. Um, I was in a very, very anorexic. And I started going to therapy this past, after I got out of the hospital, hospital in June. Yeah. And the doctor said, I can't have children again, probably. And the Again? <laughs> You've already had a child? Um, no, no, I haven't had a child. Oh. I'm a virgin, actually. All right. And well, what, was, what was he basing that on? Um, my, I had eaten pretty much, I used, I didn't have really much of a uterus. I was extraordinarily anorexic. I was, um... Yeah, like I had the fuzz, and I was 90 pounds, and I was 5'6". Yeah, but that doesn't do anything to your uterus. You, you mean your, yeah. ovary, your ovaries have shut down? Yeah. Do you take estrogen now? No. Well, if your ovaries have shut down, you should be taking estrogen. Um, I think he doesn't want me taking pills. My mom, he told me to, my mom didn't want me taking any medication, though. Hold on a second. Hey, Emma? Yeah. Are you whispering because you're at home and you don't want your folks to hear you? Oh, no. Um, I'm really sorry. I'm in the East Coast, so I was sort of tired. I'm so, I'll try to wake up. All right. Myself. Let's get it together, baby doll. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought your dad was like cleaning a shotgun in the next room and drinking <laughs> in his Ew. boxer shorts or something. I was kind of hoping that. <laughs> I kind of was, too. <laughs> it's really funny, though. The other morning, my father's never cursed before, and I heard him really cursing in the other room. It was really scary. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear just, your... Just to finish the story, what was he cursing about? <laughs> he hurt his back. It was okay. really weird, though. Yeah. But l- listen to Emma now. She sounds perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I, I woke myself up for you. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> so, and, um, go Emma. let's recap. You had a brick question. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> Monuments made out of bricks. Yes. No, you, you, you're <laughs> anorexic. Um, you're anorexic. You're right? anorexic, and somebody Monument. told you that you've had premature ovarian failure. Yeah. Are you still menstruating? No. Well, the problem, well, hopefully not the problem. Anyway, so I, went to, I mean, pretty much he said I can't have kids. I'm, I'm whatever, infertile, whatever. And yesterday I had vaginal bleeding, and I wonder if there's any chance I could have children because it just made me so miserable. I've never seen what made you miserable to think about the possibility of having kids. <laughs> no, oh, I really true. wanted to have children. And Come on, no, it made you miserable worrying about not being fertile. Read and flex, All right. buddy. Yeah. I... I and the whole I'd, I've never seen an anorectic at 15 be declared ovarian failure. 
that's awfully young to be saying that there's no chance of the ovary cycling beginning up again. Uh, oh, really? you, you, they should. They would have to measure your estrogen levels, your FSH, which I is was the, in the hospital for a month and, and a half. Okay, and the pituitary response to the low estrogen, the FSH, would have to be sky high. And even then, I'd be hard pressed to say at 15, that's it, it's shut down, never going to happen again. So True. Let me uh, hold on. Let me ask you a quick question. Are you a real doctor or just a love doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, but Emma, what about the part where the doctor gave you estrogen to take and, your, did, mo didn't. and your mom said no? My mom doesn't want me taking medications because after, um, I was, you know, when I was anorexic, I got depressed and everything, and she's afraid that I'll... You're overdose. Yeah. Well, you can't really overdose on estrogen. It really oh, can't happen. Uh, yeah, I know you tried My brother that. went that way. Uh, yeah. That was... Uh, it's no, it's true. Okay, if I sad. Estrogen, actually, will I grow? Because I stunted my growth. No, that will not affect the growth, but it oh. will affect, protect your bones against osteoporosis. Because if you've had ovarian failure and anorexia, you will get the mineralization of your bones. So you've got to well, get on the estrogen. I have a lot of bone problems now because I meet I, I was one of the larger. I was a big bone mass girl. Yeah. And um, when I was anorexic, I got very eaten down. Well, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. What about the part, Drew, where the doctor told her to take these <laughs> and the mom pills no, and the mom no. said no? Isn't she, that freaking out a little yeah, bit? And that's she, why she's anorexic, Because right? the mom is so intrusive. She's overbearing mom. Yeah. But it's not even, she, she diverted a couple times that it was, in fact, estrogen that she was offered. She said medication is just, no, 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 which I assume were antidepressants probably. But she never took the estrogen. I'm not clear that she was ever actually offered estrogen. Emma. Yes? Did the doctor tell you to take estrogen pills? Uh, he told my mom all the medications. No, no. Stop, stop with the medication. Did he tell you to take estrogen? No. No. Okay. Oh. My, um, okay. Okay. That's, okay. What, that's what I thought. All right. But look, you need to be following doctor's direction. This is a life-threatening condition. You need to stay in treatment. It's a chronic condition. For whatever reason, your mom has stepped in and taken over. She's in control now. Which, in fact, that makes your illness worse, as you well know. Get into an organization that's used to treating eating disorders, internists and doctors that are used to treating women with eating disorders because there's a ton of metabolic things that need to be attended to to make sure you don't have serious problems down the road. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Lincoln Park is in studio tonight. We'll be right back after this. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. <laughs> Drew, easy. Mics are hot. <laughs> Chester and Brad both here tonight from Lincoln Park. We're going to uh, hear something else off the CD in the 11 o'clock hour. We'll uh, get back to the phones. Got a question for the band. Kevin. Yeah. You're 18. What's up? Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I love Lincoln Park. I love Meteor and Hybrid Theory. I think they rock. And I, w I had a question about Japanimation. Yes. And about how uh, some people have taken Linkin Park songs and put it into the Japanimation, like in the background. Yes. And I want to know if the guys have seen any of it. That stuff's on a lot, like on the internet, right? Like, yeah, it's all over the place. I, I know it's out there, but I haven't seen a lot of it. Is that Japanese animation? Yeah, I think it's great because yeah. I'm a big I'm a big supporter of anything artistic, and you know, um, people do things on the internet where, you know, they, they go home and they splice up their favorite, you know, cartoon movie and they put our music over it and it all goes to the beat. And I think it's a great way for people to learn how to edit and learn how to expand their creativity. And those are the people that are going to be the future directors and movie editors and so it's a, it's it's flattering. When I you think see it's that great. Stuff. I think yeah. I think anything, no one's profiting off it, right? As, as long as yeah. no one's stealing anything and as long as no one's doing anything illegal, I think it's great that people, you know, are using our music and and doing creative things with it for themselves. I think that's awesome. Yeah, and and we we've been uh we've talked about this uh we we're talking about it a little earlier with uh in the week I think with Cold and then uh maybe with uh, Stephen from Third Eye Blind but this uh sort of uh thing about the internet Stephen. and downloading Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> or you heard the show last night. S T P H A N. I, I mean that what, that's Stephen? All right. Anyway, the don't get me going, but the the point is, is it, it it's it's on one hand, uh, I think a lot of bands don't like the downloading and that kind of stuff, or even using it for other things without their permission. But on the other hand, doesn't that just sort of get your music really sort of permeated into society? I mean, it for, gets it on every. It doesn't computer. hurt. It doesn't hurt bands who sell records. It hurts bands that right. are that are low, that are underground, and that are on independent labels, and that are bands that don't sell as many albums. 
but they still have a core fan base that they can still tour and they get dropped and they don't you know they but they don't get tour support because they're not selling their records and they don't get their fans don't get to see them anymore that's the, those are the people that it really hurts for us though the internet's always been really helpful like when we were starting out we didn't have the money to go tour around the country or right. internationally and so we'd put our songs up on mp as mp3s and we'd have mm-hmm. people download them and we actually built a fan base just using the internet which is basically free so i think it's it's a really awesome way to get your music out when you're starting out right yeah. All right, so it, uh, it's, it's sort of a double-edged sword. Yeah, it, it really is. It can yeah. help and can hurt. And I think the jury's still sort of out as to whether it does, whether it's stealing or you're losing money or you're making money. But uh, let's talk to James, who's 28. James? Hello. What's up? Oh, not too much. Uh, shout out to Lincoln Park. You guys rock. Thank you. Um, I had a question. Uh, what is HPV? Human... Papilloma virus. That's right. Warts. It's warts. It? Yep. Okay. What? Uh, how do I keep from getting this if I'm involved with a person that has it? A boy or a girl? A uh, female. Female. Did Did she say she had HPV? Yeah. You wear a condom well, religiously, and even yeah. then, it's possible you can get it. Okay. Uh, she, if she has warts visible, she is. Was that a truck? No, a motorcycle. Us? Motorcycle. I'm in Tucson. They're everywhere. If she has warts visible, she's more contagious than if they get the actual wart itself under control. But she will for well, she'll for many years be contagious with that, and possibly for an extended period of time. Okay. And it's no big deal to you. It's not going to harm you. Although if it gets in the anal area, it can cause anal cancer. Right. That's going to be tough though with, with a lady, right? Uh, yeah. For uh, no, like anal to anal. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, you give it a try, I'm but it's going to be tough. Think of how that would work, or what that would do for you. But be that as it may, uh, and if you get it. Uh, you can, of course, transmit it to other people, and that's where it really becomes a problem. Because for women, certain of the wart viruses increases the risk of cervical cancer. But they're finding now that many of these viruses go away by themselves after a couple of years, but the ones that stick around are the ones that cause the cancer. There's no wart problem with oral sex, is there? Not to speak of. There right. some is a, it's a theoretic thing, but I don't think never, it's a big deal. Never hear deal. about it. All right, James. All right, thanks, guys. Good times. All right, <laughs> boink away. <laughs> Let's go to break. Yeah, let's just... Uh, yeah. Let's see. You want to tease that one? I want to tease this one. Right. Sarah? Hello? You're 22? Yes. You uh, have a kid? Yeah. Your first, first kid was premature? Yeah. How premature? He was born at 24 weeks. Oof. Wow. Eesh, that's like a pound, that like a pound, year? pound, pound year and a half. half. Pound and a half. Yeah, that's... Tw- yeah. 24 weeks. How was many it? months is that? Oh, early. I think it was Four six and a half? About, yeah. Months. Okay, Not so... Sure. You shouldn't... You know, they try... It. The earliest they try to you know keep the babies in, they'll try to stop the thirty-two the weeks. You want to get you want at least thirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah, at least past thirty-five. Twenty-eight is crisis time. It's, yeah, that's crazy. Is it's a 20. kid? Is a kid all right? Yeah, he's doing great. Wow, it's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. So uh, the question was or is, what's the question? Oh, um, well, see, when I when I had my son, they said that there was an infection that had caused his premature birth. Yeah. But they didn't really specify what it was. Could be just vag- vaginitis. That's even associated with, or a urine infection. Well, or endometrial or uterine well, infection. Toxemia. There's all kinds that, of. That's that not an infection. It, it does, but it's not an infection. She, Chester's an uh, expert on breaks He's and premature babies. That's right. <laughs> Birth. Well, actually, um, well, now I have a daughter because my son's 14 months old. All right. And my daughter is three months old. Okay. And, um, they, when I got pregnant with her, you know, they test you, you know, for STD. All right, hold on. We gotta go break. We'll I was. Uh, I wanted to do the little <laughs> little tease thing. I thought she would uh, shout out her question, but uh, as uh, keeping consistent with Loveline, we didn't get <laughs> it. Won't block it. We'll get back. We'll talk to her about that with Lincoln Park after this. Hey, everybody. It's oh. Loveline. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Chester and Brad are both here from Lincoln Park. Good times. A little craft work in the background. Woo! I'm tripping. Hey, who is that? I always ask that. Fisher Spooner, man. Fisher Spooner. Of course. Should they make a hell of a speaker, or is it a dish? It's a high, high-end dishwasher. They make. Yeah. I got to figure that out. <laughs> All right. So uh, anyway, uh, Lincoln Park here. We're gonna uh, hear something off the CD in this break, sometime. So you guys uh, in the booth there can figure out what cut we're gonna hear next. We can speak to uh, Sarah, who we were speaking to before we went to break. She had a kid at uh, prematurely at 24 weeks. And she has another child now, right? Yes. And uh, the first child was premature because of some infection. 
And now the question is what? Um, well, I wanted to know if gonorrhea could have caused it, because when I had my daughter, I tested positive for gonorrhea. Oh, my God. Well, how are you getting all these STDs while you're uh, pregnant? Uh, well, I don't know. See, I wanted to know you're also... You're stinking whore! Another question. Yeah? <laughs> you wanted no, to know what? <laughs> you wanted to know what? Well, it's like I've been with the same person for four years, and I didn't get tested for STDs with my son for some reason. I don't know why. Well, even a... a Mul there are many different kinds of infections that can cause premature birth. You can get infections of the uterus itself. You can get infections in the vagina. You can get STDs. You can get infections in the tubes. All kinds of things can, can predispose to it. Even just urinary tract infections put you at risk of uh, premature labor. So unless they told you what it was, it's very hard to speculate what it was. The fact that you had gonorrhea on the second birth, I find quite bizarre. Uh, that nobody had picked that up before. I wonder if it was a false positive. Did they treat you before the child was delivered? Yes, they did. All right. All right. So how's it going now? How old are the kids? Um, one is 14 months old. That's my son. And then my daughter's three months old. And the the guy that is the father of both is still around? Yes. Uh, right. Is he cheating on you? I Not that I know of, and, and I don't know. I really hope not, because no. I asked him, and, you know, basically I got... Did he get tested? Cheating. Yeah, we both got tested. Was he positive for gonorrhea? Yes. He was. Where do you think he... But that's not the kind of thing you harbor for many years, not is it? Not for a guy, no. So where does he say he picked it up? Um, you know, he basically thinks it's me. He, he, yeah, yeah, it's convenient to kind of uh, he, turning the tables on you. You're here. sitting around pregnant for the last two and a half years. Yeah. What the, Sarah, you, you know, Sarah is not a detail-oriented <laughs> What's person. What's he do? Is he on the road a lot? No, uh-uh. 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 Oh, bad sign. What's he do? Does he work around metal? Or right now, he... What What's does he do? Well, he, um, he does maintenance mm. for an abused child home. Mm. Oh, my God. Really? So he's yeah. uh, picking up some of the strays, baby. Uh-oh. Come on, Drew. <laughs> he wouldn't do that. How many? How old are the kids? People are sick, man. <laughs> how old are the kids? Oh, one's 14 months, and then the other... No, no, no. The kids, the uh, kids that he works with. Right. He works oh, around. Oh, um... No, they're, uh, I think they're between, like, the ages of 13 and 15. Oh. That's Come here, boys. give me a hug. That's my wheelhouse. <laughs> Job doesn't, doesn't pay yeah, much, I, but I uh, gotta a lot tell of benefits, you. a lot of uh, benefits. That, that worries me, i got to tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but it isn't. <laughs> uh, it's funny, funny for me, but it's funny, not I mean, funny even for if you. He's not a, even if he's not a sicko, like we no. love to think he is, No. Um, really. I think that he's definitely cheating on you. I mean, did he have any sexual abuse history in childhood? Him? Yes, him. Not that I know of. You might just ask that question. If, if he has a history of anything like that, that would sort of, for me, uh, be sufficient right. evidence to uh, throw the book at him. I Where'd can that see go? it now. Throwing the, throw the book? book? Yeah. That with bricks. You'd throw a brick through the window. And you'd throw I it. don't know. I'd hit him in the head with it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Sarah, I'm glad you're so jovial about the whole situation. <laughs> yeah, hey, kudos. But, um... Sometimes. Yeah, I wish I had your spirit or uh, insolence or whatever it is. Yeah, medication. But uh, this gonorrhea thing's a little hard to wrap my mind around yeah, because uh, yeah. it's not it's not, it's not like fitting. warts or something. No, it, yeah. it's a short-lived thing, and you know you got it when you got it. Are you guys married? No. Uh. -uh. Why, uh, -uh. why? Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. I don't know. We just. We have a hard time getting along with each other sometimes. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, yeah. maybe slow down on the kids just a little bit. Huh, oh, oh I got fixed. <laughs> you got fixed? Yeah. Hallelujah. That doesn't Good. mean you shouldn't wear protection, you know. Oh, I know. All you, right. Condom still, right? Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, this, Good, she, she, she took that she real serious. She finds humor in everything, doesn't she? God bless her. Oh, I can see this guy working at the... You know, if you think about that, you doing maintenance at uh, one of those homes Who's for the guy runaway that, kids. Who would be the one victimizing the kids or it's taking it, you know... it has got well, all them keys. Hey, let me tell you, <laughs> that kind of stuff <laughs> happens at psychiatric hospitals and stuff, too. People that aren't sort of trained to understand what they're coming in contact with. They come with very provocative, sexualized kids who are abused sexually. Think, well, this, kid's, this girl's into me. Uh, hey, well, it Drew, on. if you... And, and uh, I know we're we're maybe spinning off a little bit here, but... Hypothetically, if you have a group of kids that were, you know, taken out of their home, runaways, that kind of stuff. I mean, you sexual have sexual abuse you be way up the scale. There. Super yeah. sexuality yep. going on there. Oh yes. And it wouldn't be uncommon for a 14, 15 year old girl to act out to on, act out on anyone who was around. That's right. right and if you had somebody who really didn't understand what that meant, and we we listen, I'm telling you that 
It's one of the things I wrote about in my new book okay. called Cracked, which has now changed its name from Utter Hell because right. of August. It's not but, out yet. But, but it, it, it is one of the things I wrote about is that people don't understand those sorts of limits and what it means when people behave like that. Yeah. They, they, in our culture, it's like, oh, that's cool. She's just into sex. A big deal, you know. No. Right. No. All right. All right. She's 15. i yeah. got to get a gig off at one of those places. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Callie? Hi. How's it going? You're, uh, you're 20? That's right. What's um, up? Just really quick, I want to say all you guys are great. Um, Adam and Drew, you guys rock. Uh, Lincoln Thanks. Park, uh, you guys are great, too. A meteor is awesome. Keep up the good work. That's Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, basically, my question is for Chester. Um, Chester, I've heard of your efforts to um, bring awareness to and try to um, help stop the problem of child sexual abuse. And I was just wondering, because um, that's something that I want to try to get into, too. That's a mm -hmm. cause I want to get involved with. And I was wondering if you have any suggestions for any groups or programs to get involved with, because... It doesn't seem like there's really a lot out there that's available. Well, there, there's a lot of help out there. I mean, there's support groups, and, you know, a lot of – the thing is, is a lot of these issues are dealt with in a private setting and therapy and stuff like that, or just – or they're not dealt with at all, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not like people like to go to a group and talk about – What about their, Rain? Their, their kind of things like right. that. Rain? Um, I've never heard of that, as a matter of fact. Uh, Tori Amos's, Tori Amos's group. group. Yeah. These are those gold dust moments. <laughs> there she is. That's her. <laughs> but I, I mean, I honestly don't know. I just, fairies. I just try to, I just try to. I mean, my whole thing is, is that it's, it's so rampant, like, especially in this country, that, you know, just talking about it is is good enough, you know, and just letting people know about it. I don't really know of any specific groups. I, I'll tell you what. Uh, There's something that Adam and I also feel very strongly about, and uh, two areas that we feel. Um, need work. One is that the whole area of the science of the study of trauma survivorship is expanding rapidly and mm -hmm. you can get involved with that in this very interesting field that is uh, sort of revolutionizing how we approach people with behavioral mental problems as a result of trauma well, survivorship. Well, you mean she can get into it well, by she, studying she's it? she's studying and get into that field. So the other thing, though, is the bigger issue is why the government doesn't pay any attention to this. Right. And how you can become sort of active and activist and somehow getting the attention of your, represent, your representatives to create laws, to create boundaries, to create um, incentives or disincentives to the kind of behaviors that that, that fuel the behavioral it's problems. It's because the, the catching the criminals is more important right. than, support, than yeah. giving the victim support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more important to put the guy who touched the little girl uh, in prison than it is to actually worry about what's, what the, <laughs> what, what those effects girl? of that little yeah. girl is going to have on the rest of her life. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's that's the way it, it usually works with all types of, uh, you know, victim crimes. Well, and but... But, you know, the other side of that coin is is that the victims, most likely, if they're males, end up being the victimizers of the future. So it, it would behoove the government to stop to, it. To, to, <laughs> to not only sure. stop it, but to treat, treat the kids. Treat the that's, kids. Well, that's how I'm saying. That's, right. that's stopping it, in essence. I mean, it's like with everything else. If you don't hit your kids, your kids aren't going to grow up to learn how to hit people. So right. if you don't t sexually molest your kids, then they're not going to grow up and be, uh, you know, sex addicts or get into porn or, or be become junkies either. or, right. you know, or do strange things, you know, uh, chronic masturbators or whatever. It doesn't whoa, matter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. I've told you a million Whoa. times, Adam. No, you won't you, take it no. from me, this but from Lincoln Park... No, he crossed the line, no, this he, kid. Take, uh, uh, he looked at me when he said that. <laughs> uh, he, well, you know, what can you say? I'm trying, trying to... I do that because I try to find members of the club. <laughs> oh, okay. As long as we're on the same team. Well, here's here's the thing, too, that Drew and I are always interested in in a in a in an angry sort of way, which is we believe that the government... The government's job is to protect its citizens from crime and to you know keep the streets clean and the water pure and all that kind of stuff and it's and there's a there's a finite amount of time and money that can be dedicated to each each topic whether it's crime or pollution we think shouldn't it be spent in the most efficient way possible which is in, instead of waiting for people to commit these crimes to build more prisons to assign them uh, parole officers and all all this kind of stuff Shouldn't we find the people that are f high risk? The people that, like I always say this, Drew's got three kids, we don't have to worry about them. They got Drew and his pain in the ass wife, they're never going to do anything <laughs> wrong. Maybe an eating disorder, they may dabble <laughs> in some homosexuality, but nothing that society has to worry about. And if they do, Drew has plenty of money to pay for rehab. Right. No, no doubt, you do have some set aside for that. For rehab, okay. yeah, okay. specifically. <laughs> All right. Now, there are other people who don't have that luxury, and people who are victimized, right. and uh, people that were Which abused. Which is pretty much almost everyone. 
It, it, it's, it's, very it's growing, it's growing it's higher very because the more people that got victimized, the more people that uh, victimize as they get older. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the people I would like the, the resources and the focus on earlier on so that we don't have to build the prisons and do the parole officers well, and all that it's later on. It's not only on. preventing you know, crimes where there are you know, other people involved, where there's victims involved. It's also preventing filling up the prisons with criminals who are doing victimless crimes like mm. yes. heroin addicts mm -hmm. and crack addicts and cocaine addicts mm -hmm. and people who are doing these kinds of things because of the things that happened to them in the past. I, I will tell you and what. then they're going to jail yes. simply because a, they have no self-esteem and they want to go buy some heroin. So as, they go a, yeah. as a addiction specialist, I've begun to think of myself as a traumatologist because every one of my inpatients, everyone is a trauma survivor. Yeah. And so there you go. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's it. Yeah, I always, uh, whenever uh, we do hear about these task forces that are trying to stop, uh, you know, the John from getting the hook or the, cons the consensual Never crimes. Never going to happen. I, I just, the amount of time, effort, and resources that are sunk into that. I mean, when Heidi Fleiss came on this show a few years back, wasn't uh, her last appearance, but the time before that, the time I was uh, threatened to be sued by the mm. uh, L.A. Police Department or something, <laughs> but it was a big, big debacle. But the point is, is the amount of time officers and effort they had into going after Heidi Flies would would boggle your mind. I mean, of course, every officer is going to sign up for this detail. You want to pose as a Japanese businessman and get a hand job, <laughs> or do you want to go down to Watts? And uh, I'm going to Watts, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go catch some speeders. I'm getting the handy. <laughs> But from the runaway, believe believe you me. But the, I don't blame the guys. But the point is, is the amount of resources we had into like just going after her was amazing, and it would sicken you if you heard about the. And, and they're always saying we have a limited amount of resources, we have a limited amount of men. You then need to do what we want you to do, and that's go after violent crime, and uh, crimes of that nature. Ba -ba -ba. Thank you. Hear a song? Oh yeah, ba 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 ba. Okay, want to hear a song? Anderson, how you doing there? No. You yeah. queued up? You ready to go? Yeah. All right. This one is called Breaking the Habit. Quiet. Yep. Thank you. Total pro. Dr. Bruce is in here. Dr. Bruce uh, not only screws up the shows he's in, but can screw up shows he's not in by <laughs> hanging out and distracting people. I've had anal sex and I've Bruce, passed out a couple times. Please, please. <laughs> we've heard it a hundred times before. <laughs> Lincoln that was Park. Great. Lincoln Park in the uh, studio tonight. We'll uh, take another call. Speak to uh, Esteban. Hey. Es Esteban? Uh, yeah, I think Dr. Drew needs to be the next uh, Surgeon General. Yeah. Yeah, right. and Adam needs to be the Vice President, and, and, well, Arnold needs to be President. What about and, Chester and me? Yeah. Uh, Secretary um, of State and uh, we, Department we of Defense. Honorary, yeah. We need yeah. honorary cabinet positions. There we go. But, you know, I had some uninhibited, unprotected oral sex, and I wanted to know um, what were some of the, you know, possible STD risk factors. You can get on, any STD that you could get from your genitals touching somebody else's genitals. You can get from your mouth touching somebody's genitals. But you don't, or the, somebody's mouth touching your genitals. The warts don't seem to go that way. Except the warts, probably, yeah. And the, and the things like hepatitis C probably don't transmit that way. And although HIV has been documented for the receptive oral partner in male oral sex. Does that make sense? So the, no, guy, not the person, the, yeah. person giving I, the blowjob can get HIV. That's the receptive one? The stuff's yeah. going into that person. All right. The semen but going the other in. guy's receiving the BJ. Yeah, you're right. Okay. It's receptive, a push. Yeah. It's a so jizz push. <laughs> it's a push. <laughs> so the person receiving can get HIV? That's not been proven, but it's presumed to occur. Is this with a guy or a gal? It was with a guy. All right. Yeah, and all the other usual sexually transmitted diseases other than warts can certainly occur. Which, uh, oral sex is sex. Yeah, which, oral sex is sex. Use which, a condom. Which end of the boner were you on, the business end or the ball end? Uh, I was uh, both, actually. Oh, you went back and forth. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you got business, one and he got one. Business and ball? Okay. Um, yeah. If you're on the ball end of the boner, it's your boner, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. but then afterwards he told me he had a retainer, so that kind of freaked me out. A retainer? Yeah. Why is that freaking you out? Well, I just thought, you know, maybe it might I get a cut or something. From the plastic? Yeah. Did you get a cut? Um, I didn't notice anything. He kept his retainer in while he gave you a blowjob? Um, yeah. How Hor old, how horrible how etiquette. He's very dedicated to his uh, orthodontist. <laughs> how, yeah, old, you know, how old is he? It, under no circumstances can you take this retainer out while you're awake, Phil. Did he have his headgear on? 
He was probably like around 24. Uh, let me tell you something about the gays in braces. I have seen three or four guys with ad, adult males with braces. I mean, guys in their 40s, late uh -huh. 30s, that kind of thing, all gay. Because these are the only guys who would bother fixing their teeth that far. You know, straight guy would be like, F it, I'm married. I don't give a rat's ass what I look like. I look like <laughs> snaggle puss. I don't care. <laughs> gay guys are like, they, they're going to make a move on those teeth. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Yeah, they didn't get the braces when they were younger because they didn't know they are going to be gay. <laughs> now that they're gay, you got to retrofit. <laughs> we had a gay landlord in my first apartment. With uh, as always, there's a 45 year old guy with full set of braces. It's wow. disconcerting. It's kind of weird. Although I can see it being a uh, little bit of a turn on for the fellas. You know? <laughs> yeah, I've just I'm turned about on. that. This is the guy. Uh, this is the guy that uh, when I bought the uh, speakers from the guy in the parking lot out of the van, and we were uh, testing out. I think Spanish Fly by Van Halen. I had it cranked. Uh, all the way up, he was pounding on our door and uh, trying to tell us we uh, owed him. I bounced a rent check. Is it, remember that story? Yeah. Bong going, slot car set. Rabbit. Rabbit run. running wild. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it's the worst thing that can ever happen to you and your landlord, which is the, the guy who owned my apartment, uh, he was coming over for some reason in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week, to tell me and my three roommates who lived in a one-bedroom in North Hollywood that we'd bounced the rent check. And for some reason, we were all home that day. I didn't go to work. My buddy, <laughs> the Weez, didn't the rent go to work. <laughs> Could have been it. We took a lot of days off. Inside of the apartment was, and this is when you opened the front door. It was a one-bedroom apartment. went right into the living room. We had, a, uh, we had two rabbits that we'd uh, <laughs> let run wild in the house, chase around. A small kitten that used to chase the rabbits around, which was, you, know, you never seen something so cute. When you were high. Full slot car set. It, we we were 20, 21, full slot car set in the living room and a big bong that was like a monolith. Just as a, it, it was a, a testament to, to our sloth, just right in the middle of this thing. And, and I just bought two speakers from a guy in a van, and we plugged them in, and my buddy said, I, I'm going to put this Van Halen CD in. And he just this crazy Van Halen guitar solo, and he kept turning it louder and louder and louder. He wanted to test the speakers. And I was like, my God, is this loud? But it was like noon. It was Tuesday. I figured the old building was at work. And he cranked it. And we were just sitting there stone listening. And I, I heard a... Th I wasn't hearing sounds because it was too loud. But I was hearing a vibration come from the front door. It just sounded like kunk, kunk. And I said, Weezer, turn that. Let me... And they turned it down. It was kunk. And uh, the, I opened the door. Name? The Weeze. We <laughs> the called Weeze. him Don. Well, his name is Don, but I called him... He was a sex weasel. So we called him uh, the Weeze. Anyway, door <laughs> swung open. Uh, there was Jim with the braces. And uh, he just looking at the just looking at the rabbits and the cat and the bong and the slot car. <laughs> I'm wearing a towel. We've got a bathrobe. My buddy Chris runs and hides, you know, in panic. And I just uh, stood there, and he just kept shaking his head. He just he was he was so he was so speechless. Didn't know what to say. And I wrote him another check. And that bounced too. That bounced. Of too. course. There you go. Yeah. All right. People don't disappoint Adam. No, they don't. Lincoln. Well, he went straight to the bank from the place. I, I thought I could beat him to the bank. Lincoln Park here. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Chester and Brad here tonight from Lincoln Park. Uh, let's see. Any Lincoln Park stuff? Want to give a website address or anything like that? We officially have nothing to promote. That's nice. I'm glad. <laughs> they, they don't need to promote. I guess not, but it's always nice yeah. when a band comes in with nothing to pimp. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah we, we got nothing. We used well, to, they got know, a wedding? Management used to tell us when, you're go when we were going in anywhere, you know, plug the show on the 23rd and plug the, the thing you're doing with MTV. And at this point, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. No, no, you, right. you got enough fans. We're trying to l rely on our wit right now. Can you talk about the wedding? What wedding? Okay, I guess you can't. <laughs> True. <laughs> that, that Billy Idol song? Yeah. White Wedding. White Wedding. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're doing a remix. Um, Somebody's getting married? Who's getting married, Drew? I don't know. I, I think everybody's. Fa I think all the guys are following my lead, finally. You know. Oh, the, the rest of the well, yeah. Brad's getting married. You know, married. I'm okay. try, I, see, I'm trying to work it out where everybody gets married kind of, you know, sporadically so we can take some time off. 
Right. right. That's good. You know? Yeah. Right. Yes, we, we have uh, bachelor parties. Right. That's why we have so many guys in the band, actually. We thought about this before. So Spread that, out your vacations. If yeah. everyone gets married, we'll have at least five months off in the foreseeable future. That's good. Right. Yeah. Meteora, by the way, is the name of the uh, CD. It is uh, out as we speak. And let's talk to uh, Lindsay, who's 27. Lindsay? Hi, how are you? Good. Hi. Okay. How so you doing? I'm good. Huh? Um, I am actually just finishing business school, and I was out with a bunch of my friends. I go to business school in Claremont, and we went to a bar out there, which is not something I do that often in Claremont, and there was jello wrestling mm -hmm. with these girls in, like, cheese strings and really, really tiny bikini tops. Nice. Lesbian. Right, right. It was, yeah, kind of crazy, but I was just a little bit concerned about, you know, I mean, is this something that's illegal? I mean, their tops are off, they're pouring beer all over each other did and you, licking it off it each legal? other. Did you, did you, yeah, it's legal. <laughs> did you, what? did you wrestle? No, 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 I was just a witness, Adam, just a witness. And your husband. The girls, true, please, the girls wrestle guys? No, they wrestle each other. Oh, they wrestle each other. What's this place yeah. called? Yeah, we may swing by there after the I'm show. I'm into Drew's theory. How many? I'm sorry, what? The lesbian theory? Yeah. Well, you, they're not really... I don't no, we think, think you are. Are you a lesbian, Lindsay? No, I'm not. Why no, did you was, go to the bar? Are you curious about it? Do you no, know I mean, I just went with some of my friends. As I said, they were like, oh, this will be this sort of funny thing. It was mostly guys. I went with my mm -hmm. one of their girlfriend, Gigi. And we really had kind of no idea. <laughs> she was like, uh... <laughs> All right, so whatever. Uh, okay, <laughs> but but uh, you want to know if this is the legal? So I was like at the bar, and like these girls were like wrestling in Jello, and I was like, "Is this legal?" And then I was like, "Whatever." Anderson, you're missing your whatever cue. That's your favorite drop. Come on, um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I find funny, Anderson's whatever drop is a whatever response to me getting him to do it. Exactly. Then I was with Drew at the hospital, and he was doing his hernia operation. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Anderson, let's do a couple of those. Go ahead, Brad. Scat, buddy. Yeah, That's whatever. all I got. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so, wait now, wait. It's cracking wait, under the pressure, Lindsay, Brad. Lindsay, Lindsay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand that there are strip clubs and all kinds of clubs where people it's do... just like a regular bar. I know, but... They they can do th crazy things with nude women at at bars. That's part of the the what happens. Well, culture. there is uh, Lindsay makes a point, or maybe she's not aware of it. But if if you're if you're showing boob, you can only serve beer. Right. And if you're showing full nudity, you can only serve soda. Correct. And if and if you're if you're in bikinis, you can have a full bar. But then it's kind of cheating when you have a full bar and the boobs start popping out of the bikinis. Okay, okay. It, it, you see, why? What are you thinking about doing about it, Lindsay? You know what? I basically, I was looking for an excuse to get on your show. You, I drive home and listen to you guys <laughs> two nights a week. And I have for two years, and I just finished business school, and you I know finally that, had some Hey, you know that what USC, USC's <laughs> done a study recently on uh, business school students, and... Uh, yeah. You want to tell can, I can't. I can't divulge the Okay, we you know, can't tell you the result. A little the most, too the most, for the wedding talk. You know, the most interesting uh, loophole in the topless industry that I've seen was uh, we went to uh, a topless bar in Florida. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, considered, you know, not a topless bar so they could have the liquor license. Right, that's the The right. nipples had to be covered. So the girls were topless, but they covered their nipples with clear latex. Oh. So you could actually see the nipples, <laughs> and it was just glossy. Oh, my and I, God. I, I, my question was... To one of the girls, I said, "Why do, do all the girls have such glossy nipples in here? It's weird." And she told me the loophole, and I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, I that, mean that's pure genius. It wouldn't be a bad name for a club either, the loophole. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. They, I think they should change their name to that. I always love it's really it's my my favorite part about laws, and uh, I, I love it with tax laws. Yeah. And I love it with the Bible. Yeah, too. It's like somebody lays virginity, virginity somebody lays too. it down, and and uh, then we get some smart, crafty, hungry people to just weave their way around the Beautiful obstacle thing. of litigation. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> David. Yeah. Year fifteen. Uh -huh. What's up? First, I got to tell you guys, you did a great job on that uh, Adam and Dr. Drew book. Just got that oh. from the library and finished it today. The library. Wow. Didn't know it was in the library. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. But um, oh, it's been on hold for 121 minutes. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. What's no, up? But, um, problem is, I got a crush on this one girl mm -hmm. who's the pastor's daughter at my church. 
Mm-hmm. And not only that, she was involved with one of my best friends. What do you mean involved? Well, she was kind of going out with him, kind of not. How kind of not? How was well, it kind of They not? weren't getting physical because she's past his daughter. They can't do anything like yeah, that. Yeah, but uh, short of that, they were dating. Yeah. Does he mind you going after her? Well, I mean, he doesn't really know. Well, I wouldn't do it without talking to him. Yeah, he's going to be mad, dude. Were they broken up? Yeah. They're broken up now? Yeah. How Who's... long have they been broken up? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been hanging out with him. He's been acting like kind of an ass lately. Yeah, maybe because he it's knows you're... He knows. Yeah, you're going after his girlfriend. No, I mean, he doesn't even know about that or anything. Yeah. It's just because he acts like an ass to me because he wants to impress his cousins and stuff and act like a hard. Okay. Punch him in the face. <laughs> yeah. But wait a minute. So, David, uh, this... Uh, now, the question, too, with as far as guys you know... And you guys tell me what you think of this, but the the rule is... There's two rules. If a guy you know dated a girl and you want to date her... Six-month rule. Either six months has to go by, or if you're... But that, that number changes. Six months if you're an adult. Hey, if you're 15, three months three is months. a pretty, right. pretty good stretch yeah. when you're 15. All right. Or he has to dump her. And give you permission. No, he dumps her, meaning he's done with but her. But you still got to go, hey, you know, I know you don't like her, but eh, I thought it I'd would. Be, it would be nice, but it's a different story if she breaks his heart then you're and screwed. you start dating oh, that's, her. That's true. Yeah. I mean, not only that, but it also, I think, if you're at 15 years old and you're dating someone for a long time, like, you know, six months or a year, you pretty much should just stay away from the girl, period. If it's, right. it's like he went out with her for a month... You know, they went to a couple movies, and they, you know, maybe kissed or something once, or maybe pecked each other, or held the hands, or whatever. You know, give well, that, it time, but it's still, it's still a risky business, man. That is, around that with is, your friends, older, you know, ladies. It's, it's a good point, which is if they had a substantial, you know, if they're boyfriend and girlfriend from the ninth grade to the eleventh grade or something, then that's too Stay weird. Stay away. Yeah, that's too long. But there's me, no term. David. Huh. Okay. So, <laughs> do you know who dumped who in this relationship? Not really. You don't know many details. You don't sweat the hey, details. You're, you're, you? you're pissed off at your friend. Why don't you square that out first before you destroy this relationship further? Uh, screw him, though. You're not you're not hanging with him anymore. You like her. Why don't you just go ask her out? You guys are like the angel and the devil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why don't you date her? Go not, ahead. Not you, to say who's who. Well, I mean, it's like because the pastor, the uh, her father, too, that's one of the reasons why they had to break up. Really? Because the pastor won't let his daughter date? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe well, maybe he didn't like. Worse. Maybe the pastor didn't like that guy. No. Which could be even worse because if they still want to date each other and then you move in. Do they allow yeah. dancing in your town? Hmm? This is like Footloose, isn't it? <laughs> are you Are you in Connecticut? Is this Kevin Bacon? <laughs> where, where are you? Me? Yeah. Just don't do the dance in the barn, please. I'm in the Bay Area. Bay Area. All right. All right. All right hey, David. Yeah. Maybe there's too many strikes against this relationship with the pastor and your buddy, why don't you just go find a fresh chick to date? <laughs> fresh chick. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are a dime a dozen up there in the Bay Area. Yeah. All the guys are gay. They're hungry for any straight guy. You, you probably date like a 26-year-old attorney who's yeah. a model. Yeah, and it sounds like she's the kind of girl that's really not going to, you know, be really great to date yeah. unless, unless, until she's older anyways, you know? Yeah, although the, the pastor-daughter thing turns out to be kind of crazy. That's what I'm saying. You know, give it a few years, let her, oh. let her marinate, and she's, really, she's going to be an animal. It's true, yeah. Yeah, let her percolate. Let her, yeah, let her, you know, let her, get, let her get good and repressed, and then uh, she'll explode. She's probably ready to blow. <laughs> huh? I mean, pardon I the beg pun. Pardon. <clears throat> but anytime now. Michelle? Hi. What's up? You're 26. Yes. Um, well, the real reason I called was because I uh, used to work with Lincoln Park back at NRG in uh, April of 2000. Hmm. And I just wanted to call and say congratulations on all their success. And Thank you. I'm going to be seeing them at the Summer Sanitarium Tour. Word. Um, so uh, I just basically called to say hello. Cool. What That's are you doing it? now? I'm sorry? What do you do now? I'm sorry, one more time? What do you do now? Oh, um, I'm working in a game store, but I'm actually looking for a job in a studio. Oh, yeah. oh. Game store in Pasadena? What kind yeah. of game store? Uh, the Game Keeper in the mall. Oh. Oh, yeah. I had a hateful roommate who worked at one of those places <laughs> once. Weirdos come in there. Yeah, a bunch of guys want to buy Dungeon and Dragon pieces. <laughs> you know, mullets. That kind of stuff, yeah. All right, well, hey, well Thank good, you for calling. Good times. Oh, my pleasure. Hey, Michelle. Yes. You guys carry Parcheesi? <laughs> we do. I'd like you to oh. push that because I feel <laughs> okay. like it's, it's slipping away. Yeah, it's got to make a comeback. comeback. 
Okay. It's going the way of the dodo. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> it, it absolutely is. Parcheesi, the out. dodo, and the bricks are all going the way of the dodo. <laughs> all right. So hit those bricks and push that Parcheesi. Will do. All right. Hitting the bricks. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be curtains for you. <laughs> you better hit the bricks. Lincoln Park uh, here tonight. We're going to uh, hit the bricks toward the uh, toward the toilet. Yes, Drew? Yeah. All right. We'll be back after this. Buddy Loveline, I'm Adam. That's Drew Chester and Brad here tonight from Lincoln Park. Always good to see Lincoln Park. And uh, again, tickled pink by the success of Lincoln Park. Nice guys. Good to uh, good to see them, and, and and nice to have caught them early in their career as well, too. Because uh, before the... we became totally jaded and un unapproachable. Yeah, that was uh, what was that about three and. Three years? Yeah. When they three became unapproachable? Yeah. No, no, that's recent. That's been recently. <laughs> but, I mean, when did we meet Lincoln Park, Drew? Uh, three and two change? And two, two and a half. Yeah. Two and change. Yeah. Ooh, Weren't you actually in the fast. band at one point I early played. Uh, I played that hollowed out fish. Right. Yeah, with the uh, It's too bad it didn't work out. It. Too bad you... And, and you, the flugelhorn. Yeah, and the flugelhorn. And the cowbell. It's, it's cowbell. too bad you couldn't get your look together because I know that <laughs> that was really the only thing that you needed to work on and it just didn't happen. I know, but it's like I didn't want to get the tat, and the big, the big hoop earring, the look. I always like the band advertisements in the back of the band magazines where they discuss the look at length. It's got to make you a little suspicious about the band. Always the influences, and then right to the look. My favorite is, um, you know, the '80s hair bands who are like, you know, we're all about being real, and like, you know, we've got this hardcore image, right? And you know, like we're slobs. And they all were like spending four and a half hours getting ready. Hey, let's say like attitude a must yeah. in the back of the uh, must have van. van. Scene. Must have tra it usually says yeah. like must have transportation. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, yeah, you're 17. Yeah, you got a question for Lincoln Park? Yeah. Um, oh wow, it's a real honor to be able to talk to all of you. Um, Thanks. Um, uh, in your new video, somewhere I belong. Yes. Some friends of mine and I noticed um, the models that are on the dresser. Yes. Uh, the Gundam models. Mm -hmm. um, we recognize those from the series and all that, and I was wondering what the significance of the models were. Joe likes robots. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. really what it comes down to. Joe wrote the treatment, and it was, took place in my room, you know, this, uh, this room that he had developed. And it really basically was his room because it has toys and robots and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, hey, Joe, you know. This is supposed to be my room, you know. Can we lose the toys? And it didn't work, so uh, they stu they stayed in. Cool. Yeah, it was to represent uh, a piece of the room uh, coming to life in a different way somehow in my dream state. So they kind of needed to use something in different points, and that happened to be one of them. We are uh, we're making a little progress with robots. You guys, you see that Honda robot? That uh, I mean, it walks. Upright now, wow. and they, they move around on you know they can move their legs and stuff. They wow. don't have to be uh, on a tank tread have or you anything seen, like, anymore. Old, old TV shows recently from like the 70s or the 80s where the family buys a robot. Yeah, I always do. <laughs> I do like that the wise cracking robot. The big black one with the uh, with, with the weird expandable arms and the head that. Yeah, I was always on Mork and Mindy. You know what I mean? That that robot showed up on a lot of TV shows. I'm, I'm well, trying to think of, of of something that has been around longer but is not yet functional. You, you know what I mean? Like the rope that the notion of the robot. Like one day we'll have this machine that will cater to you, will clean your house, it will stop, it well, will the protect flying you. car. Flying well, car is yeah. That, but true. there was a whole thing about <laughs> the kitchen of the future. Yeah, that food was going to be add water to pellets. Yeah, and you're gonna have a turkey dinner kind of thing. Yeah, and, and there was gonna be, and everything was gonna be sort of behind. Again, the whole thing about the doors. The doors yeah. are gonna be different in the kitchen. Yeah. You don't have those in your kitchen. You don't have the sh door. <laughs> yeah, those yeah, doors. that door. Those doors. You don't have that, Andrea. Chris. Hi. You're uh, 23. Yes, I sure am. Drew's got a robot vacuum cleaner in his house, yes, don't I do. you? Yeah, I got it from yeah, my parents. And I got one too. We call it a Mexican. You know, <laughs> no, is it true course. that they're that they're developing uh, engi and they're engineering robots that can actually live inside your body and, c and clean out your arteries and fight uh, infections and things Not like that? Not living inside, but that sort of will have directed activities. 
Like a, the, see, now that's cool. Yeah, uh, like the Polaris in your pool. Yes. Yeah, you know, like, like AIDS and stuff will be uh, in... Because no, uh, you'll have that. a little robot in there that it's fights. More, I think it's going to be more like Fantastic Voyage, where it goes to parts of your body that you can't get to surgically uh -huh. and takes something out with a the laser Coolio or something. Song? Like, yeah. a, like a like plaque around the... I realize these guys don't know what I mean by Fantastic Voyage. <laughs> Oh, that you was an old. That was an old movie. That was an old movie where they shrunk, they shrunk Raquel Welch. Oh, they, oh, they did. Well, they did a, they did a remake on that, didn't they? Really? Uh, um, Inner Space. Yeah. They did a thing on Inner Space where Martin you know. Short or something. What's space? Yeah. 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 They they take a they take a whole crew. Dennis Quaid they take a whole spaceship. A yeah. They shrink them down and then they inject them into a body and then yeah. they have to do battle with uh, white blood cells right. and stuff and like that. Antibodies that look like yeah. Yeah. seaweed. Chris. Yes. Yeah. You're 23. What's up? Yes. Um, I've been friends with this guy who's 10 years older than me. I've been really, really good friends with him for two years. We get along very, very well, better than anyone I've ever connected with, seriously, like spiritually, whatever, emotionally. He's your pal, though. He's my bestest pal. Why is he staying in Friendsville and not heading over to a romance? I cannot have sex with him because he is extremely overweight. Does he want to have sex with you? Oh, he'd love to. Okay. <laughs> Fat guys are horny, Jerome, and let's yeah. face it. Yeah. Well, yeah, he hasn't had any. I think the last time he had sex when, was when he was 24. I Ooh. see. How old is he now? 33. And you're Probably 23. Short man. nine years. God, don't, can't you show him you should just give him like a. You should just give him like, you know, one of those, you know, buddy... Mercy, buddy. BJ, yeah. come on. I've done that camping a thousand times. A thousand. I, <laughs> I gave a little bit to him. That he would just need more, and he would expect it all the time. You'd be I sorry to it. Plus, you'd be scared. I love him. I can't. He'd basically explode. So you're like really into this guy, though, right? It sounds like you like actually like love him. I do. I Why don't we get him a weight so losing operation? And get over the fat. Him. Yeah, get over it. I mean, I don't come know on. How to do that? I I'm I try not to be a, an enabler by you know like mm. eating steaks with him or whatever. It makes me feel bad. Well, how 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 big are you? I'm like 150, 155, 5, 6. So uh, you're you're about you know, you mean no, you're, uh, you're 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 no bikini model, too, yeah. but there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with you, right? I'm pretty yeah, I'm a definitely normal size. Okay, and does he? I'm sure he's lonely, and I'm sure he probably is in love with you. Definitely. And he's investing. He's, he's, he's told he's, you he's this. He's putting all of his uh, girth. He's ve investing in this relationship, but. You know, a 400-pounder has got to be in a sort of a medically supervised weight loss program. So maybe get him into a program, or maybe you can get one of the weight-reducing surgeries, which work quite well. Those work great. As yeah. a matter of fact, I met a lady in uh, Hawaii who had had the surgery, and she showed me a picture of her driver's license, and it was literally like 16 to 18 months earlier. She vaporized. And she looked like a completely yeah. different human being, and uh, she was totally happy about it. And it's relatively... I mean, there are versions that are pretty mild, pretty How innocuous. expensive is that procedure? I'm sure there are thousands it. of dollars. I don't. They would be covered, uh, you know, as a medical intervention if, if he's if this he's, if he's if he's really big like that, you know, he could definitely get it covered by his insurance because he, they're he doesn't not. have health insurance. He doesn't have health insurance. Why does he work on that? Because <laughs> yeah, he should have that. Tell him. Well, all right. Well, let, let's break this down a little bit here. So he doesn't know you're you're not moving along because of the weight. That's the only thing stopping me from marrying. But, but he guy. doesn't. He doesn't know that. See, that's whack. You should. You should. You, 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 if that's the only thing that's keeping you from falling in love and having a great relationship with this guy. I already have fallen in love. Wait, wait, wait. Him. Does he know this? Oh, he does. He knows that this is the one thing holding you back. Right, but he's so he's in a very big depression about it, and he can't. Well, why don't we start working on take him to a doctor and start working on problem solving? Does they have insurance? Get some so get some. Then when he says that, let's get you some. Do insurance. they sell you insurance to morbidly obese it's, it's, guys? He's in a group, yeah. If he's part of a you know a group? employee group. It's, I don't know how to get it started though. Does he work? He does work. He works with me. We work together. We deliver pizza. Yeah, you're not going to get insured delivering pizza. <laughs> That's sort of a comedy. <laughs> I know, because you figure everyone he drops He's off, it's like, hey, there's three pieces missing. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> hey, I tipped myself on the way over, so shoot me. <laughs> okay, now hold on. This is, this is a compelling story. Uh, I, I agree with the surgery angle, but let's face it. They're, they're, they're uh, pimping pizzas. Right. He's not going to be able to get this surgery. What if she, what if Chris said to the guy, listen, I'm in love with you. You're in love with me. This weight, uh, not not forget the aesthetic part of it. I, can't get I don't want my husband to to die of a coronary yeah. three years after exactly. I marry him. I love you. I need you to lose the weight. You start showing me you're losing the weight, and I'll start creeping into your underpants. Bingo. 
I think she could lay that out to him, Chris. And I think he'd be motivated. Except to do be that. wary that guys that that can't lose the weight often that weight is a barrier to intimacy. And Absolutely. although it's on subconscious level, what he's doing is preventing this relationship from going further because it frightens him too much. Can you? And he doesn't feel worthy of it, and he feels like right. you'll leave him if you get involved. Chris, and all Chris what if you lay it out to him in just plain English? You, you, you've got to start making the effort, and we will be, we'll get each, each inch you lose, I will get that much closer to you. It would be hard for me, but I would do it for him. Do it. Do it. Do it, girl. Tell him that. Why don't you take their phone number, Tara, or somebody in there? Give the phone number. Let's hear what the, the follow-up is on this one. Oh, please do. Okay. Yeah. Hey, stick with it. You can tell them, tell them to call us, uh, too, I, if you want. Because I, I, I just, I mean, you know, when you find somebody that you're in love with, you're not, the chances of you finding somebody that you connect with this much again is so slim that you're better off trying to get him slimmed down so you can... Well, I have concerns that once, in fact, he does become emotionally available, magically she'll become uninterested again. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> or he, he, or he might actually go, hey, you know what, confidence. chicks are looking yeah. at me. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, uh, we got to go to break. There's nothing better than that guy that's 400 pounds and he slims down to what he thinks is a tight 310, and now he's on the prowl. <laughs> he's got himself some cycling shorts and a muscle shirt. He's on the prowl. Beefcake. We'll be back. the show. Meteora is the name of the CD, Lincoln Park. Go out and get it. Don't make me wrong with my curses, please. That's too late. Yeah. This one's uh, long gone. I want to thank Chester and Brad for uh, coming in here. Always uh, nice to see can you I, guys. Can I be honest with Thanks you? for having us. Please, yeah. <laughs> could you? <laughs> I actually had a, had a good time. Good. It wasn't as painful as I thought it was going to nah, be. No, it was pretty easy, Honest, right? Honestly. Honestly? <laughs> can I be straightforward for a minute? Uh, it's good, right? That's yeah, great. How oh, good. Come really back. Coming down come here. back anytime you like. Whatever. All right. So, <laughs> until next time, this is Adam Kroller for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Well, when I go to clubs, right, and I start dancing with girls, mm -hmm. I get a Mondo hard on. Mondo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.